Let's be real for a minute. At this point, if you haven't heard of a DF64, and you're in the coffee scene, you may as well be living under a rock, because the DF line of grinders has become pretty prolific over the past couple of years, but it was only a matter of time until they progressed past the widely used and relatively inexpensive 64mm burrs. Which brings me to today's topic, this chunky boy, the DF83, which much like the original DF64 is a single dosing, low retention, all around coffee grinder. But as you maybe guessed to your, might I say, very impressive powers of deduction, the main difference is it utilizes some big ol' 83mm flat burrs. And oftentimes when it comes to stepping up in size, there are a lot of questions and sometimes assumptions. So in this video I'm aiming to shed some light on that age old question, if bigger burrs means better coffee, on top of touching on some of the finer points of the DF83's features, performance, and downsides. But first, in the spirit of full disclosure, MeCopy sent me this grinder without the expectation of participation in the content of this review, and only asked that I link to them in the description if you're interested in learning more or picking one up for yourself. But that leads me to the actual sponsor of this video, Standart Magazine. Nothing goes together quite like a cup of coffee and some quality reading. And Standart Magazine fits into that pocket of happiness perfectly. Each issue is like a snapshot of coffee culture at that moment in time with topics ranging from those in the forefront to those in the margins, and even sometimes I make it in chatting about espresso. An included sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters helps bring the whole experience from your fingertips to your taste buds. And right now, for a limited time, you can try out Standart Magazine for only $9 shipping. Just head over to standartmag.com Prometheus, click Try First, and treat yourself to a first-class publication and coffee sample for an unbeatable price. Top to bottom, the DF83 is essentially a larger, more powerful version of the rest of the DF line, borrowing some aspects from the original and the DF64 P and E. Immediately you'll notice it returns to the angled design that wasn't present in the DF64 P. But it does have a mostly anodized body, and includes the same accessories, like a wooden cap, a rubber bellows, and a plastic hopper. One major and actually very welcome change from the recent DF releases is the 83 is again an all-around grinder, giving you control from espresso to filter. The adjustments themselves are stepless, giving you those highly sought after and subtle changes for dialing in a finicky coffee. Just inside the grinder you'll find the 83mm burrs that give the grinder its namesake. And much like the 64mm grinders, the 83 comes with a stock set of stainless steel Atal Mill burrs and has the option for a premium set of SSP high uniformity espresso burrs. The burrs themselves are spun at 1400 RPM by a 550 watt motor, which if you're doing the math is twice the size of the DF64. And finally, the burrs move the grind to the updated low retention chamber and dosing chute into the included cup or your portafilter. Now that we've covered the basics of the DF83, let's get more into the real meat of this review. Beyond the obvious, beans go in, grinds come out. But speaking of grinds, let's talk retention numbers. On both espresso and filter grinds, the retention without using the bellows was 0.2 grams on average. This decreases to 0.1 grams when utilizing the bellows. Personally, I don't love using it or the look of it, but in terms of bellows, this is one of the better designed, effective, and sturdy options I've used due to its cone-shaped interior. But like I said, I found minimal and honestly in my mind acceptable retention numbers even without it. The grinds themselves coming out of the newly updated chute and declumper are very fluffy and are dosed very cleanly and accurately, so much that you don't even have to use the dosing funnel if you don't want to. The clean dosing is also partially due to its overall grind speed, which due to its large burrs and high RPM, whips out nearly 3 grams a second. Now all these factors I just mentioned in the context of performance are more or less universal, but the burr sets are the point where things really change in the cup. So when it comes to choosing between them, it's important to consider what each brings to the table. In terms of taste, the standard Ital Mill steel burrs are a solid all-around option producing textural, balanced, and well-extracted espresso and filter coffee, but also seem to have a wider sweet spot and generally just more forgiving during dial-in. On the other hand, the SSP high uniformity are intended to be espresso focused, producing shots with higher levels of complexity and highlighting those more nuanced fruity and floral flavors, but due to their production of fines can be more finicky to dial in and more likely to produce some astringency in the cup. And yes, they can be used for filter coffee, but the finicky dial-in continues. 
as the increased fines means you'll need to grind coarser than normal, leading to brews that often run quick to start and then stall to a trickle in the latter portions of the brew. So in short, the SSP option just generally needs more finesse to get it right across the board, and it can be worth it, especially for those who are focused on espresso, but also keep in mind that it's a $350 upgrade. On the other hand, if you're planning to take full advantage of the all-around grinding, I'd recommend going with the stock option. But regardless of your burr choice, it's very easy to access them for cleaning or swapping. Just remove the ring, the adjustment collar, and the upper burr carrier comes right off, allowing access to both. Alas, as all things are, it's not perfect. So let's talk about the DF83's quirks and downsides. As I already mentioned, the DF83 has a couple of burr options, the steel Atal mill and the SSP high uniformity. When swapping out the stock burrs, since they aren't the same thickness, this means your zero is no longer dead center and moves about a quarter turn. But you can move the collar ring to show its new zero, so at least you can keep track of your grind size and have a steady reference point. The grinder motor is very powerful, but along with that power comes a good amount of noise and also vibration. So you'll need to keep an eye on your portafilter as it grinds because it can wiggle its way out of the forks if you're not careful. Speaking of the forks, much like the DF64P, the rubber grips tend to help a little, but they also tear very easily. And finally, the last three are repeats, essentially issues that carry over from every DF grinder I've used. The oddly placed power cable. Why? Just why? The dosing funnel that rattles around during grinding. I mean, magnets are cheap. It just feels like a very simple solution. And finally, the plastic cup. In my mind, once a grinder hits the $400 mark, the accessories should be metal. I mean, the plastic does feel durable, just not premium, and grinds do like to stick to it. With a lot of things, there's often an assumption that bigger is better, but in the case of grinder burrs, that statement should come with more context. Dialed in using the same coffee, shot time, yield, and steel burrs, both the DF64P and DF83 produce nearly identical shots from taste to extraction percentage. The only tangible difference between them is grind speed. With the 64mm burrs spinning at 1400 RPM, it takes about 11 seconds to grind through 17 grams of espresso, essentially double the time it took the 83 burrs spinning at the same RPM. Of course, beyond speed, the grinder still has a sturdy build coming in at 24 pounds. The materials overall are of good quality, and the coffee you can brew is on par with grinders in higher price ranges. Coming in at $700, you'd be hard pressed to find anything running 83mm burrs at that price point. And most are intended for cafes where speed is a critical factor. So in the end, what you're getting with the DF83 is a commercial grinder for a prosumer price. And honestly, that's not a bad deal. And of course, just like all coffee gear, what it comes down to is what you're looking for and what you want out of it. And the DF83 doesn't disappoint. It achieves well in all of its stated claims as a single dosing, low retention, all around grinder, and it does it all in blazing speeds. And if those are the boxes you're looking to check, then the DF83 may be a grinder worth considering. But with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the DF line of grinders and also on larger birds? Have you found them better beyond just pure speed? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as you may have guessed, we're back, baby, to our regular scheduled program, so I will see y'all next week. And a big thank you to this month's Patreon supporters, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Thomas, Sean, Horace, and Roe, John, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Jason, Jeffrey, Jeff, Brian, Brandon, Tyler, JRC, Stephen, Marco, Lord Bumbley, Arthur, Techcom Advisors, Happy Camper, Devo, Ben, Monster04, Bruce, Kyle, Lilac, NK, Brooks, Henry, and Sam, Nano Roastery, Pat, Suen, Sergey, Matthew, Miroslav, Malkonig, Schlack, Shrey, Andrew, Pedro, Rami, and Daniel, and of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and the upper right hand corner right now. And last but certainly not least, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.